Hey guys, welcome to episode two of the podcast. Thank you for all the support with the first video. I'm actually recording this the same day that I posted the video and created the channel. And thank you everyone that's listened to a bit of it or listened to all of it and liked the status that I put on social media and all that sort of stuff. Thank you. I'm glad it's up and running. And like I say, this should be, or this will be rather, episode two, titled Answering Back by Caroline Duffy. The episode will be me reading a couple of poems, or four poems, I think, from that anthology that Caroline Duffy edited and curated again, back to that word. But before I... uh, go on to introduce that book and read the poems from there I just wanted to to amend a slight mistake from the first video I'm not sure if anyone would have caught it but I said that I intended to create a video or an episode soon on the Thomas Wyatt poem they flee from me in the first episode though I I referred to the poem as they seek from me and this is a a big mistake, I've got some words muddled up and anyone that knows the poem I'm talking about will know that that slight change in diction from flee to seek completely changes the meaning of the poem. The Thomas Wyatt poem which I will read and review and discuss very soon I'm sure is called They Flee From Me. The poem doesn't really have a title, the title is the first line of the poem. He was a 16th century court poet, so it wasn't as if he was uh, a a published poet selling books of poetry in the day, in the way that poets do today. He was in the court of Henry VIII. And his poem, They Flee From Me, That Sometime Did Me Seek, is a poem all about once being prosperous. Lots of people around me, lots of women, etc. But now, no one's interested. So by me saying, they seek from me, it's the opposite, which you could definitely do. A poem from that perspective about somebody who had nothing and now is very popular. But it was a genuine mistake, but it leads quite nicely into the book in question in today's episode, because Answering Back, edited by Caroline Duffy, is a book of poems that she edited and there's an introduction to it and well let me read you the first sentence of the forward written by Caroline Duffy for this anthology answering back I invited the best of our contemporary poets to select a poem or poem in translation from a poet from the past which they would like to answer in some way so she's included in the book as well hers is the last poem like I say she curated it organized it published by Picador, who are still her publishers, I believe. It came out in 2007, reprinted in 2008, but this must the version I have must be a, an even later reprint because she became Poet Laureate in 2009 and in her bibliography page at the start, also by Caroline Duffy and Picador, it includes books from when she was the Poet Laureate. Uh, historic tenure as the first female. I really like this book and I recommend it. It's it's good in the same way that the Ted Hughes anthology that I'll read that Thomas White poem from in the future is good because it mixes contemporary with very canonical poetry and that's the very essence of the book. So I'm going to read a couple of poems canonical poems written by dead poets, chosen by successful contemporary uh, poets. I'll read their response and maybe discuss a little bit about the poems or the poets themselves. But let's get to the reading. So the first set of two I'm going to read, the first poem in that set is uh, by William William Carlos Williams, it's called the wed <laughs> it's called the red wheelbarrow william carlos williams the red wheelbarrow so much depends upon 
a red wheel barrow glazed with rain water beside the white chickens. William Carlos Williams is a very famous poet, American poet. He's dead now. He was friends and collaborated with Ezra Pound, very controversial poet, very influential poet at the start of the 20th century. And this William Carlos Williams poem that I just read is very short. It consists of uh, four couplets written in free verse, no capitals, no punctuation. And if it sounded, if I read it awkwardly, I apologize. I'm not 100% sure how to read poems, the emphasis. I've never heard Williams read it himself. But that's Red Wheelbarrow, and that was chosen by Ian Macmillan. And the poem he wrote in response, rather playfully, is called The Green Wheelbarrow. Ian Macmillan, The Green Wheelbarrow. To be honest, not much depends on this. My dad just left it by the side of the lawn when he went to pick me up after I fell. His spade and fork sat in it waiting for him to return, like my mother sat looking through the window each night waiting for him to come home from the office, like she'd waited for him to come back from sea. Winter nights, the rain glazed the road, it turned to snow, flakes floating like the feathers of chickens. My dad picked me up and I stopped crying. I'm crying now, dad. I wish I could sit by the window and see you coming. Go on, push the wheelbarrow again. Let me hear the music of the squeak. So that's Ian McMillan's response to The Red Wheelbarrow by William Carlos Williams, his poem The Green Wheelbarrow. Ian McMillan is a contemporary poet. He's still alive. He has a radio show called The Verb, I believe, on a station on BBC, which is a, the British Board Broadcasting Corporation, I think it stands for. I've never listened to it, but many successful poets go on it. His son, Andrew McMillan, I've met him a few times, and he's a really nice He's always seemed like a nice guy. And he's a very talented poet, contemporary poet, successful. He's got a show on the radio coming up soon that I would like to listen to. And he's actually just, this is Andrew, he's, he's just published a new book called Pandemonium. I believe it's his third by Jonathan Cape, or published by Jonathan Cape, I should say. I haven't read it. I think it's literally only just come out. I'm not sure, but I'd like to think there's a poem that focuses or alludes to Milton's Lucifer from Paradise Lost, but I'm not sure. Pandemonium is a cool name for a, for a book, and I'm sure it'll be successful, and the best of luck to him. The last two poems, um, or the next two, last two poems I'll read are by D.H. Lawrence and Jean Sprackland. Let me just find the page. Okay. Um, in Carol Ann Duffy's introduction, where she talks about how she sent this, or she, she came up with this idea and she spoke to the poets that are involved, and she says how some are playful, the poems in response, some aren't. One poet asked her to change the title of the book, but she, she didn't want to do that, and it, that's all said in the foreword. Um, but in the forward as well, she says how W. H. Auden, Elizabeth Bishop, D. H. Lawrence, and who is the last one? Another poet are the most are the most frequently used. Oh, William Carlos Williams. Okay, who we just read. So W. H. Auden, Elizabeth Bishop, William Carlos Williams, and D. H. Lawrence were the most used poets. So I'll read the D. H. Lawrence one that Jean Sprackland wrote. And then I'll read her response, or the poem that is at least positioned as being her response. D. H. Lawrence, to women as far as I'm concerned. The feelings I don't have, I don't have. The feelings I don't have, I won't say I have. The feelings you say you have, you don't have. The feelings you would like us both to have, we neither of us have. The feelings people ought to have, they never have. If people say they've got feelings, you may be pretty sure they haven't got them. So if you want either of us to feel anything at all, you'd better abandon all ideas or feelings altogether. So that's the poem by D.H. Lawrence. 
I personally, as a fan of some of his poetry, wouldn't have chosen that poem. But that's his poem to women, as far as I'm concerned. Very prosaic, though it is written in lines. Not a lot of clear imagery there, but a lot of repetition. Like Lawrence's work, it often deals with relationships between men and women. I'm a huge D.H. Lawrence fan with regard to some of his shorter prose works, St. Moore and some other novella. I suppose you would call them novellas or long short stories, I think are absolutely outstanding. And some of his poetry is, is, is truly phenomenal too. But that's the poem Jean Sprackland wrote, and this is the poem that is her response. Though I have read it in one of her own collections, and I should just quickly say that Jean Sprackland has to be one of the best poets, in my opinion, living and writing today in England. I'm a huge fan, and I'm a big fan of this poem too. Jean Sprackland, Feelings. He adjusted the chain on my bike, so I let him leave a few oily marks on my blouse. After that, he'd always be coming round when my parents were out, asking how did I feel, had my feelings grown altered or faded, were they dying? I thought of a tortoise asleep in a box of straw. In spring you had to reach in and feel for warmth carry it onto the grass and try it with dandelions. It was weeks before I knew that all I wanted was to be driven at night up to the gravel pit, wearing only his proper coat, then to throw it off and run into the water, feeling nothing at all. So that's a poem by Jean Sprackland. I would say that's quite a typical poem with regard to themes of Sprackland, very physical, lots of natural imagery, lots of clear imagery, very precise diction. Like I say, Jean Sprackland, I'm a big fan of. And I should just quickly say that Jean Sprackland was my, my mentor of sorts while I did my, or while I completed my masters in creative writing in Manchester. I only met up with her once and she edited or read some of my poetry and, and gave me some feedback and the rest was online via email correspondence but yeah she's a fantastic poet and also published by Jonathan Cape a lot like Andrew uh, the same as Andrew Macmillan some of her books I will 100% review especially her collection Tilt which I believe came out in 2008 or the early 2010s a really brilliant collection that won a big award or maybe a few and that's what I'm going to read from the book. There are many more I could choose. The Carol Ann Duffy um, responds to Rudyard Kipling's If, you know, a very famous national poem. Rudyard Kipling being the man who wrote Jungle Book. That's probably how we know him best. Carol Ann, I would also, well, I sh I'm going to say was, was my tutor. I can't stumble in over my words was my tutor while I was in Manchester as well at that same university, very prestigious course, and she taught me for a term. I first met her in Edinburgh when I was with some friends during the Fringe Festival. All of them were and still are artists creating good work, and I wish them all the best. But it was during the Fringe Festival when I saw her we all saw her doing a book signing in the Waterstones branch in Edinburgh and I went in, not as a huge fan of her work, but somewhat in awe of her and definitely respectful of her success and of course she has many great poems and and I had no intention of ever being taught by her but the following year I I applied to go to Manchester and she was the the head of the creative writing course there. But anyway, I asked her when she was signing the books, I think I got rapture in this answering back from her. I said to her, do you have any advice for an aspiring poet? And she looked at me and said, I do, you should read and you should read some more. And that was it. And um, 
I paid the money and got the signature, just Carol Ann, or Carol Ann Duffy, I suppose it was. And um, it's funny, now all these years later, I'm saying something similar to students, not specifically about poetry, but if you want to improve, you should read and read some more. So that's Answering Back by Carol Ann Duffy, four poems from that. I hope you enjoyed the video, like, share, comment if you wish, if not, thank you for listening, all the best as always.